Um, reading my diaries, take one. <coughs> The car ride's thank gonna you. be so much fun. Thank you, thank you, thank we're you. We're singing. Okay. We'll do a couple Taylor Swift for you. Okay. Then we're gonna move on from that. <laughs> and we're gonna do Beyonce. Beyonce. <laughs> thank you. And we're gonna do Doja. Perfect. Doja, yeah. okay. Coco will be Baby Shark. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, iHerb, for sponsoring this video. If it weren't for you, we wouldn't be getting paid. Oh, she's so bouncy right now. Wait, can I just hold her really quick so that we can say hello with her? This is her favorite new thing, guys. Watch. Hello, honey! This is where it all started, my little pudding cup. <laughs> Okay, you ready for lift off? She loves lift off lately, you guys. This is the lift off, okay? <laughs> Bye. Hi. Mo. Whoosh. That's my espresso machine noise. <laughs> so today I'm gonna share with you a piece of my history because I'm opening it for the first time with you and I wanna take you guys through the journey of how I got to where I am today. Part of this, you're gonna see my strategy of my career, and you're also gonna see my health journey, because as you know, I went through a tumultuous health journey to really find my healthiest place. And that is why I also wanna share with you what has helped me be as healthy and as radiant as I am today, and that is iHerb. iHerb is crazy, because not only do they offer multivitamins and things to help you on your healthy, beautiful journey, but they actually do have products that offer support in beauty, in babies, in... I shop iHerb, not just for my multivitamins, my baby care, but they also have things for pets and beauty and so much more. They ship to 185 countries and they're shipped from climate controlled facilities to ensure quality. What I really like about iHerb is they have a very engaged community. So if you're like me, I love reading comments, I like seeing what people have to say about a product and you know, find other people that I can talk to. That's what you can do on iHerb. Not only can you talk to other people who've used the products, you can also answer questions about your experience with the product and you can refer friends and family, which all earn you reward points. My iHerb box came in. Okay, these are some of my essentials that I order from iHerb because it keeps me overall balanced with my health. First off, skin. Yes, skin is a part of my health and I love Mild by Nature's products. The Hydrating Body Lotion and the Hydrating Body Wash, they both have candela and echinacea, which is super soothing for your skin. The body wash is so foamy and this lotion I can use everywhere. For overall energy, since I need it a lot now being a mom, I am obsessed with the Organic Spirulina, the Peruvian Maca, and the Mushrex. So the Mushrex and the Peruvian Maca helps with your blood flow, it just gives you enhanced energy, and they're so easy to just incorporate in your smoothies and your diet. And last but not least, you guys know I love my tea, so this is the Golden Seps. It's a turmeric tea because if you know, my beauty routine incorporates turmeric into my skin, but I also ingest it. Thank you, iHerb. All of their products are verified by third-party companies to ensure quality. And this is my fave, they have a 90-day money-back guarantee, in case you don't like it. Right now, they're celebrating their 26th anniversary, which means for you, you get amazing deals all the month of September. So make sure to check out iHerb right now because they're having their anniversary sale. I wanna save you money, honey. You can use my code GenieMy for 20% off. Links, aquí. First off, for you real fam members, you day one subscribers. Do you notice where I'm sitting right now? <coughs> this here is the actual Hello Honey couch from my home before I got married and moved. We shifted here to our home in Atlanta. One thing that Jeezy promised me when we moved in is that I could have a really nice meditation room. I wanted books, I wanted a comfy vibe, and I wanted something very familiar. And that is why we brought this couch home. Do you remember these signature pillows? <laughs> Welcome to our Librario. Is that how you say li library in Spanish? Biblioteca. No. Biblioteca. Welcome to our <laughs> Biblioteca. This episode is inspired by Uncle Dennis, Theo Denise, <laughs> because <laughs> when I was moving, I needed someone to help clear all my important like things from my childhood from my home in San Jose. I moved and started my career when I was about 
um, 19, moved to Los Angeles. Those things kind of stayed in a pod, never got touched until one day, Uncle Dennis hit me up and he was like, I'm cleaning up and trying to help you pack so you can take your important things with you. Not only, yes, is there mad old footage of you from your childhood and also your days starting out as a television host, but you also have hella like diaries and planners and calendars. I knew that he had diaries, but I never knew that I actually saved my like to-do list and my calendars and things like that because I don't know why I would save them. Dennis, what did you exactly say about how special it was, Dennis? Oh, it just showed like how astute you were because like um, you took notes on everything and like uh, all like just the whimsical ideas, everything like it was very studious. I literally left high school with like a 2.18 GPA, no joke. I could not for the life of me figure out school and I didn't feel like I fit in. I didn't feel like I understood how to study and be good. So for him to actually say it was studious, that like brings me tears because I am really great about things that I'm passionate about. Are you ready to see the goodies? All right, this was not easy to bring here. It took putting all these things into one big luggage for guess who to carry to come here to shoot. Just got off the flight. Oh, the carousel was stopped. Waiting to see if Jimmy's journals arrived and aren't just being read by somebody else right now. When Paul flew to Atlanta, he had to make sure that this was extra secure for me. Okay, so the good news is I have the bag. I made it a point to lock the bag. The bad news is I may have lost the key. So the gentleman at the Lowe's told me that these would definitely work. Oh, it's tight. Oh my God. Wow, thank you to the Lowe's on Commerce for saving my beep. And it came with another lock. So she never has to know it even happened. Good as new. Let's just say it was not easy. Thank you for carrying a locket, Paul. You're welcome. One thing about me as a kid is I documented and saved everything. This is a good portion of it right now. <gasps> Look at this. November 18th, 98 to October 28th, 2000. Old letters, old magazine covers. And this is my gem right here. These are my old diaries. Literally every day I journaled, stay out, look at this. I think I'm gonna go through this right now. This is a huge reminder of how I got to where I am today. And this is my very first diary I ever owned. So these are a couple things that I remember really helped me stay organized. So I don't even know I've ever talked about this, but recently I shared this with Paul that I um, went to go get checked because my mind was all over the place and I uh, I got diagnosed with ADHD. Very common, learning how to work with it, learning how to cope with it. But to see myself back then go through such crazy feats to keep myself organized, like having several notebooks at a time, making sure that I highlight, you know, um, tab these things so that I could remember everything that I need to know. And I love that I took the time to do that when I was younger because if I hadn't, I don't think that I would have been as focused to be where I am now. I have to remember this, by the way, I'm saying this, but I have to remember this to encourage myself to find my new organizational system today. I know I just dropped that like it's not a big thing. It's not that it's not a big thing. I think I'm still getting used to saying it. I also know and hear about so many people going through their own journey with ADD or ADHD that I never wanna just say the term as if mine fits everybody else's experience. So I'm still learning it. If you wanna talk about it, I'd love to share with you how I learned that I have ADHD and what I'm trying to do to help cope with it. The first thing I remember doing when I was younger is I always kept multiple journals. And if I used different pens and organized them with tabs, it made me feel like I was doing more for myself. Like this right here is my foolproof plan. It included making a resume, making sure to list all of my achievements, contributions to what I was doing in the beauty and the styling community. So I started out as a makeup artist. I traveled and worked with celebrities. Then I merged into becoming a stylist because at the time, a lot of these celebrities didn't have a stylist and I was so good with silhouettes and body image and 
being able to shop, honestly, that I just kind of blended the two. How, at a time when people weren't hiring stylists, would you want to pay me and give me things like a day rate or a shopping rate or a closet assessment rate? Here's, oh my God, this is crazy. I used to write in this every single day. This is like one example of one day for me. 9 a.m. I would hike and then I would call a person that I knew that could help connect me in some way. I'd have a dentist appointment, then I would meet with a networking person. I would schedule in another person to meet. I would do a leadership debriefing with another person. I would have another lunch. I would, by the way, go to these lunches, but I really wouldn't have lunch. I would just order like the most inexpensive thing, which was with a coffee or a tea. And then I would just be so busy talking that I would either say, oh, I wasn't that hungry, or I would just order like a side salad or fries. And it would keep me going to just eat throughout the day as I met with different people. Relationships are everything. Building a relationship with somebody, even if it didn't mean it led to anything, was a really strong reference. It was better than a business card because anytime somebody mentioned me or talked about me, they had great things to say and that really helped me move along in the process of whatever God had in store for me. That really, really helped me stay as positive as I am today. Okay, this is crazy. I'm looking at it and I'm tripping out because I was so proud of my font and the way I created this, but this is my first ever show pitch, a diary show about me. At the time, GoPros were a big deal and people were kind of putting them everywhere to capture like a skateboarder's moves or a snowboarder's like, you know, ride. I thought, what if I took these cameras and I just strapped it right here on my chest and it was everywhere I go, I am having a dear diary moment and I'm telling you, what my life was like, what it's like meeting this person that I'm sitting down with, what it was like going on these jobs with these different celebrities, and it was just a girl's way of getting some things off her chest. I even have sample webisodes, like fake it till you make it. Jeannie reveals the easy ways to sauce up your look and to build your confidence from within, even if you don't feel you have it. 15 years ago, I had an idea that then eventually, I can't believe I brought to fruition with Hello Honey. All right, this is something else. On October 13, 2008, at 12.27 a.m., I sent a group email to all of my girls who were going to help me plan my birthday party for 2009. I wanted to have a birthday party that would bring together all of the people I either had met in LA or wanted to meet so that I could really show them who I was and also connect my people to help build the community I wanted to have. Genie Superfresh pilot premiere web launch party. So I was launching my website at the time and I also had made a pilot about the type of style show that I wanted to have, which I also have on tape if you ever want to see that. 50 to 80 of Genie's close friends and industry peeps. The fact that I didn't take heed to this, I remember I had huge cardboard cutouts of my face that my girls were walking out holding and that people could take pictures of. I had sponsors for this party to help me pay for it. I had a step and repeat. This was really cool and it did help me meet and make a lot of friends that I still have today. But the crazy thing is, as you remember with my 40th, I learned there that this really made me draw farther away from who I really am. Who I really am is this type of setting. I like intimate one-on-one. -on -one. I like feeling like I'm talking to you at home. You guys send me videos of you guys watching Hello Honey on your TV screens or from your phones with your kids, and I love it. And I was never this. I was never the big crowd person. When I did this, I felt really lost and I felt very Hollywoody. Lots of people, air kisses, short conversations that don't mean anything. That felt very fake in this binder. I put here, in this tab, my dream. My dream here, wow, this is crazy that I still have this. This is from Self Magazine in August 2008. This was an article that I cut out because I was so inspired by it, about a woman who became a voluntourist. This is who I am. This is what I love to do. I love meeting people, being able to help people. That's why I got into beauty. That's why I got into styling. It's because I really love helping people one-on-one. -on -one. I remember seeing this and I thought, that's what I'm gonna do. I am going to go to the country that I felt most comfortable traveling as a tourist in, and I took my trip to Vietnam. My intention was to go to Vietnam to start out by volunteering, and this is where I actually fell into the situation of finding out that my family friend was being trafficked to pay off a debt for her family. That inspired me to find out more about where trafficking takes place all over the world, right here outside of our very front door, and to commit myself to help women and to fight trafficking for the rest of my life. 
This article is the first thing that ever inspired me to actually become the activist that I am today. That ended up taking me to my first ever headshot that landed me my job as the host of How Do I Look? It was a four year contract. I was getting paid a substantial amount to actually you know, pay off my bills and, and make my $500 a month rent. That job really was a combination of exactly who I stayed true to be. A person who was an expert in beauty, but also at the end of the day, it was a show about helping women. It was a show about serving women. The first ever job that really echoed who I am and what I want to be about. I read a quote on, on one of my post-it notes that I wrote that will always be what I'm about, and that is Jeannie Mai celebrates people's potential. Today, I'm that just with the Jenkins added. After leaving the reel, I really asked myself, am I serving people and women like I wanted to in the very beginning? I loved the reel and it was so fun and exciting to be able to talk to famous people and, and, and be a part of an amazing cast. I want to revisit what that's like to specifically serve women and to specifically serve purpose. I do know getting out of the reel that I got really tired of talking about celebrities' lives. And now is this exciting time where I want to really pour into my life in the past and remember who she was as a little girl and who she is now with all of these amazing gifts that God has given me and this amazing experience that this industry has, has, has fed me. In planning this episode, which I've been very excited to do, okay. I asked Anissa for a little extra help okay. and I have a little surprise for you to also bring back some memories, if I may. What are you doing? Oh my God. Close your eyes. Okay. What? Close your eyes. Do you trust me? Not really. <laughs> Open your hands. Oh my God. This is my old makeup belt. This is my brush belt. This is my first brush belt that I wore at the Mac counter in Valley Fair Mall. I wore this every day. gloss and sponges before there were beauty blenders. I wore this like it was an S on my chest because when I put this on, I loved helping women feel beautiful. Not just the makeup application that I would do as I would sit people down and get into it, but it was the conversation that would happen. How did that date go last week? What are you treating yourself out for? What am I doing you up for tonight? These were the questions that I asked whenever I wore this belt. It was such a special time in my life. How did you find this? And you know what's crazy? This is like a real leather Mac belt and it was really expensive because I was getting paid at the time $13.50 an hour and I remember how much I would have to save up to get this because this was about a $200 belt and I wanted to look super official and there was a fake leather one and a real one and I got the real one for myself because I was like, I'm the real thing, I deserve this. Thank you iHerb for sponsoring this video. Subscribe because obviously why wouldn't you join? Thank you so much. I love you. This one, my first ever diary that I started at seven years old. This diary had a lock and to see that someone had broken it off and not only that, had gone in and tore the pages that I wrote that were the most painful for me. I was... I read.